review and let's let's watch this welcome to overwatch we're going to do another episode of probing the many today we're going to be talking about well you can see the crudely drawn on the screen for your entertainment uh rogue versus envy two of the highest convening teams in the north american league envy have been unstoppable but rogue had like a a resurgence right they they moved out to la i believe they're playing on american pings uh they moved out to la they're all in one country they're all practicing together again they suddenly had this massive burst of of strength and so rogue is suddenly looking really good again and it's like <gasps> oh what could rogue do could rogue actually make something happen so i haven't seen actually a huge volume of envy playing i haven't seen a huge volume of american contenders when i say like i haven't seen a huge volume of it what i mean is i have been watching it but i've used to been watching it where it's like it's on a monitor here and i'm playing something else here and i'm looking over occasionally it's like oh that's kind of cool oh this team's look looking good this player's doing well uh but it's it's not so much like i've been deep diving into this so i'm actually kind of excited to sort of plunge in and like let's let's look deep at what is going on with these teams and why you should be so excited maybe for rogue in the world cup in F team france uh or why envy is just looking so strong right now uh i've just to uh, preempt the comments about envy seagull i'm still like i haven't looked too deep into it i saw the announcement i heard the announcement i'm very happy for brandon he's a really cool dude um i don't know if he's gonna be playing or if he's just gonna be a substitute and streaming you know consistently for mvs as well and providing like media presence uh i don't know but i'm I've, from what i know of brandon and from what i know and seen of him like he is probably gonna you know if he works his ass off i'm pretty sure he could be someone so it could be interesting um the question is, can he replace anyone on Envy who is currently there? And the answer is probably welcome not at the moment, to be honest. Adrias 1990 as well. What a what a time to start. Welcome, 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 welcome on board to get some scrub hype going. Let's let's start the show and let's let's take a look at this. They started on Oasis, and like first things first, I'm actually going to wait a second for them to leave spawn. They are running the rat. They are running the rat. So this was sort of an interesting thing that sort of happened. Um, like let's look at these team lineups and think about what's happening. Triple tank. Oh, that, that's too thick. Too thick. Much too thick. Uh, triple tank with a McCree. Because uh, Time is a fucking god on it. AKM is actually a really fucking sharp McCree as well. Uh, was probably at, at one point better than Time uh, One of the best in the world, if not the best in the world. Uh, faded away as Sword 76 became meta and so on, so on, so on, so on. Well, he said he's there to fill some gaps in their silly. roster. Yeah, it's not too bad. Like, if they can swap him in and out as well between maps, for example, if you could just swap players around, then that would be really strong. Hey, uh, Ratata... Oh, my God. Okay, Ratata... Ratatatamgo. That's what I'm going to go with. Ratatatamgo. Ba -ba -bam -bam. Ratatatamgo. Da -da -da -da. Uh, anyway, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Right. But this is sort of a uniquely American thing. In Europe, the Junkrat, the Trash Mouse, hasn't really taken off. In North America, they've been playing a lot more. What's interesting to me here is, keep in mind, this is Old Diva. Contenders is played on previous patch, basically. Um, so this is not the, the new Missile Diva. This is Old Defense Matrix Diva. So I'm going to be interested to see what soon can actually get done here against all this tanky hit points. This Anna is going to get Nano Boost so quickly. But the question is, like, where does she put the Nano Boost? What does she do with it? So some interesting decision points sort of coming up already for Envy to sort of keep an eye on and look forward to. Going to the low grounds for it. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Interesting positional choice. I mean, like this is feeding right into the Junkrat's hands. And I want to draw your attention to this. So this camera apparently died. Oh, thank you. Like, I want to draw your attention to this. So AKM gets first blood. But soon clearly got some good hits in on Taimu. And so that is pretty much this fight is going to be done. There's no way that these guys are going to be able to brute force their way out of this choke point against a Junkrat spamming into it. But they're going to try and wrap their way around with the flashbang. But the moment that pick happened, that was done. Weird choice from Envious to go into that side room. Well, good at it. Like, good... I don't know whether that was good scouting from um, Rogue. It could have been good scouting from Rogue and just checking, like, okay, where do Envy like to go first? How do they like to position on this map? How do they like to play? What do they like to do? Do they run into the high ground? Do they run into that side room? If they run into that side room, well, Junkrat is an excellent pick uh, because you're just going to spam in there and just going to get killed. Uh, like, you're just going to get a kill and then you saw how, in, like, immediately that fight looked over. There was nothing that they could do without the without timing on that McCree. There's just no good damage output on this team lineup. Uh, so they're going to have to be really scared of effect. Holy shit. 
These are fast nano boosts as well. This is sort of the uh, like this is one nice thing about Anna. Stop pausing. Just freezes every now and then. So effect is on super high charge. Gets a nano boost. Anko is going to counter on something. For the love of God. Is it an electric cowboy? I don't think it's an electric cowboy. Very nice pick off from Mickey. Good job by Anko to get that ultimate off though, but Effect is going to just steamroll here, I think. Deadeye almost gets him. Riptide is definitely going to get him. Doesn't get him. Doesn't get the nano boost. It, effect. Effect has a grab already. Holy shit! <coughs> That's brutal! Effect is just killing everything at this point. Like, that was a really nice job by Effect to get that much charge that quickly. That was very well played by him. Followed by a. Just, the nano boost was correct, basically. And then he, he, they just got value and value and value and value. Nox looks like he used an Earth Shadow. Like, that's such a shame that that didn't get effect. What does this Earth Shadow do? He's just, he's dueling the, he's blocking off the enemy Reinhardt. Ooh, ooh, I don't like, ooh. So Nox is, so I want you to focus, like, don't focus on what's happening up in the front, focus on Nox. So this is what I talk about a lot when you're talking about, like, Reinhardt positioning. When it's like, you've got to think about where the sources of damage are on the team. So this looks like a little squiffy to me. So effect is on high charge, nano boosted. This Zarya is just fucking, like, terrifying, right? Oh, it's the end of the world. Uh, so this Zarya is just going to destroy absolutely everyone. Nox, meanwhile, is blocking Coco, and maybe Taimu's behind him as well. Um, can we spot where Taimu is? There's the Lucio, there's the Anna. Don't know where time it is at the moment. Maybe he's behind Coco. And so Nox probably is worried, like thinking, "Oh well, I have Earth Shadow. Maybe Coco has Earth Shadow too." So I'm blocking him and blocking him and blocking him. But he's just so far forward. The effect is just running and killing absolutely everyone. Mickey just dives the back, slams the Anna. I don't know where this Nano Boost went from Anko. Maybe on the Zarya? Maybe on Nico? Judging just from where Unko was looking. Like, Unko panics and puts the nano on to Nico, I'm guessing. Just judging from what we can see. And it's just... The, but the fight's already over. Like, that, that effect just charged way too quickly, thanks to Junkrat, and then nothing stopped him. Nothing, nothing did anything about him. So it's just a high charge area cutting through your back line, and they they can do anything about it. This is going to be hard now because they're going to be pushing into triple tank with a junk rat, and honestly, the triple tank is not really going to give a shit. Um, but they're just going to be able to tank it all. So, like, I'm curious to see where this junk rat pick goes. And not expecting huge amounts out of it. Taimu finds an angle, gets a kill. And this Zarya is just so big. Constantly, it's just like Zarya on high charge plus Diva is going to melt through Nox's shield time and time and time and time again. Envy just looks so comfortable at the moment. I mean, there's sound barriers on both sides as well. Effect gets first grab. It's a good Earth Shadow to counter, I think. No. What? No, it's just a sleep dart. Yep. Then Coco can just walk into it and get some kills. Taimu can just throw a dead eye in as well, just for security and safety. The fight's already done, though. It's all that was needed. Cleans up soon. It's getting absolutely nothing done. Harry Hook helpfully disarms the trap as well. This is dominant out of Envy. I don't see the Junkrat doing much here. It'll be interesting to see if that comes true. Maybe if he gets an ult, he could do a lot. Oh, see what he went for there. Um, 
He tried to do it like a through the barrier ult, or he just tried to hope that Nox would start swinging. Come on, Twitch. Fucking Welcome up. to Overwatch, Monsterly. Uh, they just had none of it. They just had none of that shit. Hey, Triple X, uh, Kanoha, Triple X. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome to the many. Um, no kills off the back of the grav. Like, this is this is insane to me. It's like the grav is pretty decent. I just had a whiffs. There's two targets in it, but because effect does so much damage, no one can get past the barrier anyway. They try for a charge onto um, onto Coco. Doesn't matter because Anna's just healing him up, and then. Welcome to Overwatch, and hey, Martin Brownlow. Holy shit, guys! Thank you so much. You're being very generous today, and it is appreciated. Welcome, Martin Brownlow, as well. Mickey's just cleaning up. No fucking problem. All that and every Reinhardt in the world ground with that. I had a. Uh, there was a gamble. Like there was a decision and an intent behind that uh, shadow. It wasn't like he just randomly used it, he expected either um, Nox might drop his barrier to take some swings, or he might move so far forward that he can just actually have through the barrier, which sometimes kind of happens. Riptire goes in, this Riptire has to do something, because this Junkrat sure as fuck hasn't. Nico's already half dead. This is the value of Riptire, Riptire is a pretty good ultimate now. Might even be too late though. Mickey drops a bomb in the back, just to- this is really annoying me from- player at the moment. Uh, and then the grab. This actually might not be enough. Nox gets a pretty good ultimate, I imagine. Gets a Zarya at least, which is stopping effect. Sound barrier stopping everything. Mickey does a good job catching AKM as well. Mickey just being an annoyance in the back line. But yeah, too little, too late. Honestly, I'd say this lacks discipline from Envy. Like, you are two down in a fight where two of them are all low, but you've lost your main DPS and you've lost one of your main supports. So the grab is kind of unnecessary. Like, if they just save this grab, then they win the next fight. Because maybe wins might be able to squeeze out a sound barrier. Maybe. But there's honestly nothing to just stop them coming in with the grab. This gives Rogue a good swing in, honestly. Because um, Rogue will have a grab for next fight. So they'll be able to win the next fight off the back of that. Harry Hook committed sound barrier, so there's nothing that's going to stop this. There's... Mickey can try and catch it, so they're gonna have to be like they're gonna have to play around defense matrix. But if they just play a little bit intelligently, the spam from Junkrat's gonna force out a lot of defense matrix as well. They get it in just the right place. What? What chunked them? Harry Hook, that's a hundred. Now that's a fire strike if I've ever seen one. That isn't a fire strike. That looks like a McCree shot. Maybe AKM found an angle and just gone around the side here and just landed a couple of shots in, but that's a bad miss. And honestly, the the weird thing here is okay. They're doing a good the stalling, which is super nice for them because the weird thing was I don't think they needed the grab even at that point to win that fight. Like, they didn't need the grab. They just got a double kill, taking out both supports. They could just grind through the enemy team and just kill them. Because you have an Ana healing, the enemy team doesn't. So you just have so much more healing that you'll be able to just kill them. Um, that looked like a fire strike and maybe a McCree shot. Coco is a very conservative Ryan. Yeah. He's going to have to explode this. That was greedy. I think the second he saw the McCree here, like, I think... You, you got it. Okay, Taimu. Taimu was famous for one thing. There's a fucking infamous quote about Taimu. Taimu has good aim. You know, Taimu is known for fucking landing shots and stuff. If you jump this tire up here and you see that there is a McCree here and like the Lucio here, you respect the shit out of that McCree. You fucking go for it, boys. So he just he starts to waggle and then. Okay, McCree rolled back and he wouldn't be able to get it anyway. Fair enough. Fair enough. He's got to be so careful about this McCree, though. Taimu, like, Taimu will diddle him if he tries any more air jumping. You saw how low he got there, 60 hit points. Interesting fight. Let's, let's just let this fight play through and then go back through it. Soon can get a lot done here. Especially with Nox, but he's going to have a hard time, like, yeah, they're going to have a hard time doing anything from this point. Chips is in such a good position right now. And that is going to be that. Okay, let's let's see the start of this fight. 
gets nothing. And let's go from here. Okay. So spam going out, spam going out, spam going out. Mickey gets rid of Soon's. Uh, yeah, Mickey got rid of Soon's tire. For God's sake, Twitch. Reinhardt positioned very conservatively here. Sound barrier goes off. Do I probably save AKM if I had to guess? Maybe. What is happening with AKM at the moment? Where is AKM? AKM is trying to find an angle on the side. Just doesn't get the sound barrier. That's a huge shame because he's already on half. And I'm not sure what the sound barrier is triggered by. So I'm guessing the decision was made just to engage. It's a beautiful earth shatter to just counter. Like this will just say, no, you're not pushing at the moment. You're not doing anything. Managed to get wins. Counter charge almost deletes Coco. Harry Hook gets a boost, yo. Feels fucking bad, man. Because AKM didn't get that um, sound barrier, Chips Hagen gets an easy kill. Harry Hook from here is just going to be able to actually help clean up on the floor. He's actually going to be able to do quite a lot of damage here to win, so he is going to be effective. Nox gets a good counter shatter, but it only really gets two and doesn't catch Coco. And so Coco is just going to walk forward, I think, at this point and smash people. Soon can try and get a couple of kills, but soon can't quite kill the Zarya enough and didn't go for Chips. Which I think might actually be the key error of this fight. Because Chips Ayan is just over here and he's just going to heal and heal and heal. And he was stunned as well. He's, a, he's one grenade to, to be dead. But effect is just going to get healed up. Coco's on the point, going to be healed up. Like the Anna is going to output so much here. And you can see how low Anna is. Jesus. So it's like two sort of two mistakes compounding on each other. AKM being a little bit out of position when the sound barrier goes down. Didn't get the sound barrier, so died extremely quickly. Chips high in being, that means that Chips can just sit back safely, spamming uh, heals. And then um, not focusing on the right target, trying to blow Zarya up as Junkrat with no other DPS. There's just not enough damage there. And then the Ana could just pick him up, barriers come back online, stuff like that. Zarya is perfectly fine. Oh, I just noticed I need to change this coaching text. Rogue. Envy. I do this. For God's sake, it does I hate the fact that it does this. Uh, position size. If I like do, there we go. Lovely. OBS sometimes is a bitch. And there we go. That looks okay. Oh, okay. Pharmacy coming out. Doesn't surprise me at all. Pharmacy completely standard on this map. 100% standard. Envy don't seem to be opting for it. Instead, this is part of why they're hiring Seagull, I guess. Because Seagull plays Farah. Time and effect do not play Farah. Effect has a devastatingly good tracer, though. Soon is good. Effect is probably better. So what's going to be interesting is like this is pharmacy versus dive. Otherwise, mirrored I think other, aside from the pharmacy. So it's just like Genji, um, Genji Zen instead of pharmacy. Uh, let's see how it goes. Like this could all be AKM is the the complete decision maker in this. That could have been a I've turned into a sim. This is this is crazy to me. I'm not insane, right? And seeing, like, the world's best fucking double kill with a boop there. Interesting target choice as well coming out. In Very interesting target choice coming out. But Nico is, like, the first one to, to go down. They literally just drilled the D.Va. What this is going to mean is... I'm not actually sure what this is going to mean. It's like, who do, who do they go for next? Soon gets effect. That's pretty fucking huge. So they've lost the D.Va mech, sure, but... Diva's not actually protecting a huge amount here. Like, it's not like there's a Zenyatta that needs babysitting at the moment. So I'd honestly say losing the Trace is probably a bigger influencing factor. That said, the, the AK, like, AKM has to land a fucking shot at some point soon. AKM. Let's, let's go back and count the rockets. Let's count the hits, because, look, like I said, this all hinges on AKM's pharmacy. It hits the barrier. One hit on Coco, half a hit on Coco, so we're at 1.5. Miss. There we go. That's that's some damage in there. There's a little bit of damage in there, I guess. Tiny, tiny bit, tiny hits there. Just nothing. Nothing. Ew. 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 
Ew. Sorry, I can. That's mm. not the best. It's not enough damage coming out. So the difference there was effect and time who hit things. Soon hit things. AKM didn't really hit things. And it's not like AKM's being hugely pressured. So I'm not entirely sure what happened there. That that is rather devastating, to be honest. Okay, we're not going to draw too many conclusions from it. It could just be a bad spell. It could just be a, a bad moment. That's pretty tasty. That's slightly less tasty. So this feels like an overcommitment on Nox. So they realize that like they've isolated Nox in a corner, but there's still enough protection on him to make it a little bit difficult. Timer goes too deep. Nico scoops up the kill. Nox goes down, which is pretty big when you're fighting a Trace Genji. It's a good pulse bomb. I think it actually did some damage to Coco as well, gets the DMEC. The DMEC is absolutely huge, the res is fucking beautiful. Um, this is a chance to just kill the shit out of Chips. The fact that Chips is still alive kind of offends me to my very fucking core. What? The target focus just seems so bad out of Rogue. This just feels so sloppy. It's like they're all just doing their own thing and not... Like there's no there's no plan. There's no, like... I don't know whether AKM is like the DPS caller, like the target caller, or whether... Whether it's Soon, whether it's someone else, whether it's Nico, whether it's Nox. So this fight starts, Mickey gets demacked, and to me like, that says, okay, you now have free reign, so let, let's think about it in this way. If D.Va is demacked, you now have free reign to go on any target you like, basically, because the, the D.Va is there to scoop up damage and stop damage going on specific targets. If you have Tracer and Fire, you can just dive whatever the hell you want, and they can't really stop you just killing it. Um, they, they have to try and like, out-DPS you at this point. So they're coming in from a bit of an odd angle. They've lost Nox, which is a lot of sort of stable DPS going down. Nico goes down, but the res is there, picks all three of them back up. So now this is a 6 versus 5.5. Mickey's super low. Mickey dies. Okay. So to me, like, the next targets are pretty simple. You figure out where Chips is, probably, and try and kill him. Otherwise, Monkey's Primal Raging, so, like, you're not going to kill Coco very quickly. Uh, with two supports alive, it's not really a strong target. Maybe you can find Time Moon Effect, but they can generally evade, so Chips is, like, the obvious target. Where is Chips? Chips isn't anywhere special. Chips is just over here. So why, why, are, we, why are we following... Why, why are we shooting Coco? Can we get a rocket almost on effect? Effect has to recall they use sound barrier to just keep themselves in this fight. And it's like, now Mickey's back, and now Mickey's going to be causing problems for them, or he's almost back. He's going to be back in a second. And somehow effect gets first kill, second kill, like, the DPS focus? Ugh. Ugh. Simon complains that Trace has no counters in the game. He's not necessarily wrong. He's not the only one who complains about that. Contenders use his pre-master uh, pre change? Yes. This is on the Junkrat buff patch, basically. The Junkrat buff, Roadhog buff, that kind of stuff. I'm managing to swing it back. So the so the barrage gets Taimu after AKM almost blows himself up twice, and again like I, I want to point out I think the sole difference here, the sole major difference that is happening here, that's a good bomb from Effect kills Anko, but the sole major difference here is that AKM is hitting targets that aren't Coco, <laughs> and he just two shot the the Lucio and Lucio's dead, and suddenly it's so easy for everyone just to clean up, like he just stopped shooting the Coco. Which is the, the Coco, the one, the only Coco. Like, holy shit, that makes such a huge difference in terms of the actual relevant DPS output of this team. Will they use a light patch for playoffs? Probably. I would be surprised if they didn't. This is a really 
Yeah, I'd say this is actually a pretty nice position for Rogue at the moment. They have a pulse bomb, enemy team is pushing in. This is going to be pretty easy for soon to get a, probably a good stick on something. Like, you could probably hit something here that can't really stop you. The Taimu could probably cause some issues, but yeah. They're going to have res up during this next fight, probably. They should actually be feeling pretty good about themselves. Um, they should be a little bit worried about, you know, these numbers. These numbers are kind of scary, but... This is a very winnable fight. Pulse bomb goes in. Whiffs it. Eska, lol. Um, feels bad, man. But even then, it's just it's still enough to just depressure Nico. AKM gets a shot on chips. Soon should be dashing in to clean this up. No, no. Time time is on. Twenty hit points. Soon should be dashing in to clean this. This up. Mickey's got a kill. There we go. Okay, two people have to be res. Chips is now dead. Okay, thank you. Thank you. This this feels like if I had to speculate, if I had to speculate, and I will, I would speculate that Rogue's DPS cooler is doing something very different at this point, or is like it just it doesn't feel like people are responding of what's happening. Like soon should be trying to kill what AKM is killing at this point. You are playing this as a sort of pseudo pick, pseudo dive comp, so you want to make sure that you are actually getting picks and diving targets when they are vulnerable. That was a bit of a appalling dive. Soon is now going to go for it. Pulse bomb's not too bad, but affected like just affected is lighting up the kill feed while all this is happening while they are struggling to even touch Taimu. Onko, Onko comes in to kill Taimu. They they've lost the point. Oh my god. Okay. The first of all, like this um, conk blast is sloppy as hell. You know, I said that Envious don't play Farah. I'm sort of tempted to say that Rogue don't play Farah. I'm sorry, AKM, but this that was shocking. And then... Ugh. It's a valiant attempt with the pulse bomb, and then you can just see how much he's struggling, because he has to evade so much, because time his aim is fucking good enough to nail him. He has to be so careful. So Harry Hook is just keeping him alive, and soon cannot stop for a second. Envy are now very comfy. Very, very fucking comfy. Because they have the double support ultimate. So, like, if a team fight goes relatively long, they will have a very good time with it. Unko's still putting up an ult. He will have res during this fight. High noon goes off very early. Weird dead eye from Taimu, especially against a team with a mercy in it. He's down here. So I'm guessing he's trying to just, he's like zoning for his supports, I'm guessing. He's just trying to like zone out this area. Mostly through here. And so I think Nox goes in, but he's just, he bub, he drops a bubble and he, he's fine. Like if McCree is holding high noon, then Effect is not, Effect and Mickey will not be able to get through that barrier very quickly. And he, he just bounces out of line of sight. Nico peels off, isolates Taimu, kills Taimu. Terrible high noon. Sound barrier a little bit too late. Again, we're trying to peel. Actually, no, no, this is correct. Like, we're actually finally shooting targets that need shooting. Like, thank you. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for doing this so much. Gunny, you threw you with the 12 months. Holy shit. Enjoy the shiny purple icon. Welcome to the, the exclusive super elite purple icon club. That doesn't actually mean anything, but welcome there anyway. Uh, this is finally fucking rogue. Shooting the right targets. Hey, look, Winston and the Farah are both shooting on, both shooting at the fucking Zenyatta. This is needed to happen ages ago. Unfortunately, Coco, no, Coco just gets one. But effect, effect is a bloody legend. Holy shit, effect just kills everyone. Effect literally had to like effect carried that game. Effect carried that game so goddamn hard. We're gonna try and keep an eye on effect, what effect's up to. Taimu does nothing much. Rogue's dive, go for the Zen. Zen just, like, it results in just them getting good alt stacking. Or good, like, alt swapping. DMEC happens, Pulse Bomb gets Nox. And then because there's no more D.Va, effect is just loose. D.Va just catches it, effect is just literally lined up, head height on the pharmacy, just kill, kill. Easy. 
Holy shit. Holy shit. That was Effect being a god. And then just like... AKM's Farmer, uh, Farah did not impress there in the slightest. And Soon's Junkrat didn't work against Triple Tank. Like they had to change something up there. Ooh, ooh. Golden Boy, Mr. X, looking handsome, as always. Skip forward. Skip forward, skip forward, skip forward. Numbani! Very interesting map is Numbani. Very strange map. First point, basically a pit. Bunch of different ways you can defend this, bunch of different ways you can hold this. The Junkrat pick is an interesting one. That I kind of like. It all depends on where he's going to stand, but the thing with Junkrat is he can very easily, with the buffs he's got, it's very easy for him to reposition to the high ground. If the enemy team just try and get onto the point, you're just shooting down into the point. There's tons of, like, every pathway, every approach is very narrow, so Junkrat's going to do pretty well. Interesting first trap placement. So, this could be a, a matter of research, a matter of, like, looking up what Rogue do. Because there's a couple of different approaches. So, when you're playing on Numbani, if you're playing like what is relatively standard, what has been standard, which is the dive comp, um, the hard question, the hardest question is how do you get your tracer into position for the dive? Because usually there's a support like up here, or up here, or up here. So, getting tracer in this space is actually pretty difficult. Um, running up through here, for example, is just a bit of a no no because the enemy team just stands up on top here and just defends this very easily. So, you can't really walk through this doorway, uh, it's just too easy to hold, basically. So just trying to brute force out here doesn't really work. What you see most teams do is they will run the team through here, and then they will dive and engage like up here, like this. The hard part is how you get the tracer into the back line. Well, you send the tracer through this pathway here, and then she can either go up the stairs, and she can go around through blue, which is the corridor behind, or possibly she can just go through around the back of the point. You can also play teams where you literally just go around the back of the point, and then you come out and you try and steal this high ground. Um... This trap set up to me screams of, I, I suspect where this tracer is going to go, therefore I have put this trap in position to catch this tracer. The question I have is, will Zen, uh, will tracer even hit it? So you can see soon going through underneath. And he's just getting into position. AKM is probably going to... Oh, he's not sure where AKM is going to go. Let's see. Let's see where AKM is going to go. Looks like he's just going to follow the team in. Gets him. Fucking beautiful. This, this, this is either like good coaching, good scouting, good research. Just seeing how soon plays and where soon goes. And just setting the trap. And that, that stops this entire push. That is fucking beautiful Overwatch. It's just, it's good scouting. It's good like, hey, we know pretty much what you're going to do. You could, in theory, maybe. Put like the trap here in this doorway, for example. Or put it further in in this corridor, because you know that the Tracer is probably going to go through there. Um, that could also work. Like, the Junkrat could definitely do this every single time on Numbani. I fucking love that. Where you could just have a trap combo set up somewhere, whether it's through this low ground route, whether it's through blue at the back, or whether it's through the pathway behind the point. And you just leave the trap there, and you don't really need to do anything else with it. You could just leave it there, let it sit, and Tracer is probably going to blunder into it. And Tracers then have to be way more careful with their approach. This is pretty standard um, to deal with dive. Pause, pause, thank you. So this is, you know, pretty typical. Um, basically, if you have Soldier and Anna, they can just drop down, peel back a little bit, and then the Soldier plus Anna can just provide enough healing for each other to deal with anything. There's no real follow-up. So this is actually kind of a nice bait. When Nox has dived in, but it's just Nox. So everyone else is fighting on the point and probably just engaging the counter dive. Meanwhile, Nox is tying up, the Anna is tying up, um, sorry, tying up the Anna is tying up Harry on the Soldier. It's very nice. I've just noticed, I'm, I'm completely fucking stupid as well. This is a mono support comp. This makes this play so much infinitely better. Holy shit, this makes this play amazing. Because what this means is, so with mono support, so it just it took me a moment or two because it's like, wait, Harry Hook is on Soldier, then who's playing the Lucio? It's not effect. 
So they're literally just completely relying entirely 100% on chips. Mono support is interesting, but it's a huge gamble, and this is going to demonstrate why it's a huge gamble. Because Rogue have time, because more than 15 seconds have passed, Rogue can press tab and see, oh, look, the enemy team is running this lineup. They know exactly what they're running. There's no, like, scouting. You don't have to figure out what lineup people are running. Um, and so it's just like the, the soldier is just, you know, the soldier's there to support. But then just by sending Nox to ice to just jump chips and just play defensively, doesn't even have to really do anything aggressive, just plays defensively and blocks chips, there is no healing for everyone else. So you basically turned... This, like, even if you just block chips and Harry Hook is involved in the fight, this is just a group of, this is a team with no healing, this is a team with two healers. Guess which team usually ends up winning. So all Rogue needs to do is isolate chips, which is what they've done, and suddenly they're just, they're just going to kill everyone. Nox doesn't even have to stay there, he can retreat, heal up, no, no issue. They just move on the point and that's that. Super weird. I like Envision's mono support with Sombra plus Anna. I, I don't. I'm not sold on Sombra first point Nambani. There's the health packs you can use. There's only one good one, and that's so vulnerable to getting booped. This is standard rogue. This is like super deep. You know, this is balls deep dive rogue. Um, rogue are playing to the element right now. Chase them as far as we can. Keep them back. Make sure that they are scram. Like, make sure that if they're trying to gain ground, they are fighting for it. But effect. Doing effect stuff. Effect is a fucking god tier player. Um, yeah. And we're going to try and take this opportunity so they know that, you know, they have a small window of opportunity while soon respawns. Soon snap back in the fight, though. So it's so it's tiny, it doesn't really matter. They're going to start contesting this point, though, because you want to fight at this point because you are going to get two fights in this section. If you don't fight here, you won't get two fights. Very good pulse bomb from effect. Pretty easy pulse bomb from effect as well. And then Chips has Nano Boost, so I think he's fine using it here. Like Nano Boost is Nano Boost, especially on this team. Like Time Boost still on the Rat uh, on this team. Line, like what else are you gonna put it on? So you might as well just Nano Winston. You're not saving it for anything special, so you might as well just dump uh, dump it in there. Send Coco in. Coco can easily get a kill. That forces Rogue to maybe have to use some kind of support ultimate to try and defend it. But Rogue, to their credit, are disciplined. Um, at this moment, so they don't have, they don't like use stuff. This is cute as fuck by Taimu, but stupid, like, it's cute but very vulnerable, which is why I like the fact that Effect is actually running away, but still kind of around. So look at this positioning. You have the Junkrat here, the Tracer here, and then most of the team over here. So what the Junkrat's going to be doing is he's just going to spam into the point, uh, spam into the spawn, because this is such a tight corridor, you basically funnel out through a single corridor. If Taimu could just spam into it, it become like Nico is going to have to use defense matrix just to get people out. He could just land a hit. That means that um, effect is there in position to go for it. It also means that if uh, they push on Taimu, Taimu actually might, if he has both comp mines, be able to do a bomb jump this way. That is theoretically possible. I'm pretty sure he might be able to do that. I don't know if that's the plan. We'll see. Uh, if they just dive Taimu, then effect can come in and help get something done at the very least um but that would be my concern with running something like this where you have time who just putzing around on the sideline here is that they just die for that interesting decision not to throw the bomb but like this feels like just a missed timing oh, for god's sake twitch player where soon has gone a little bit too early for this play and then people aren't ready and then he's sort of got the court like that, that is 100% a stick. 100% a stick, and he just doesn't pull the trigger for whatever reason, and then reveals that, hey, I'm back here. Which is going to put chips on edge. And, oh, hello, Taimu. Did Taimu do the... How did Taimu get there? He's just, he's just here. I want to know if he went around the fucking... Uh, he just appeared... Oh, mate, he just... Okay, no, he didn't do anything fancy. He just he went through blue, or went through where blue is, and just came down. Fuck. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Rip tire for Tracer is not super worth. Still struggling to get out the spawn door here, though. They have at least managed to get out the door. This, this is honestly good enough to just get out the door. Nox has to not die, though. So Nico has to peel to go and peel for Nox. Both tanks do manage to get out. 
Envy really committed heavily on Nox. Nox did a really good job surviving that. He still has Primal Race though, so... Like, that's super high value. A lot of ultimates going off. Gets the kill. This feels sloppy by Envy. I mean, Harry Hook didn't have an ult yet because, you know, he was playing Soldier first round, so... Not gonna have an ult. And hasn't really been doing too much on this Soldier pick. Soon with the bomb, and they just use Transcendence to engage, super hard. Visor, easy win. Like, Mickey can't stop everything. Gets... Runs him over with a counter, but... This is what's called die on point time. So everyone's just trying to stall the point and die on the point. Slow it down as much as possible. Effect runs back to rejoin his team. Uh, yeah, they just... Mr. X just mentioned something absolutely crucial, which is wins still has sound barrier. And oh my god, they found Effect. Effect... Nox is showboating a little bit there, I think. Might have been a little bit nervous that he could have died here, because the pulse bomb does hit him, so Effect might have got the kill, but I think this is... I don't think he needed to primal race that. Because they're literally capping this point. Maybe if he died, maybe the logic is that if he died, just in case... Um, like, if he died, then there's a chance they might not take this fight, or win this fight, so... Safety. Maybe instead of showboating, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Sam Barry's even out. Diva Bomb is pretty good. Clears the point for a second or two, buys a little bit of time. AKM drilling kills. Effect kills the Lucio, of all things, first. The Diva's on the front line. That's a pity for Effect, but ran into, I think, a, ran in, ran around a corner with a Discord off, so not too surprising. Chips being out pressured. Mickey, not too long for this world. They're going to take this point. Time who's doing work. This, like, Time who's out, uh, out play here manages to get them to force Transcendence, kill soon, and. To hold the point. This this is why Overwatch is interesting because individual plays can cause breakout moments. Like this fight is in kind of dire straits at the moment, right? Like Chips is scared as hell to position anywhere. Mickey gets demacked, so he's not going to be able to stop any damage coming out from AKM. AKM is kind of doing whatever he wants. Soon is rampaging, no, no doubt somewhere. Anko's getting free Discord orbs, Winston doing whatever the fuck he likes, and then Taimu scoops up a kill on AKM, Dmex, Nico, and then kills the Tracer as well, after Sam, after they use Transcendence as well. And the grenade from Chips means that they just clean up. Holy shit! This is why, en okay, and now Effect has an Ana boost for some reason as well, but just, just to hunt targets down, I guess, maybe. Um... Holy shit! Basically, that that's all you could say about that. Envy outplayed. There's, there's, they were in a losing situation, and Time we managed to scoop up kills and enough damage to hold that point. Again, just spamming out, trying to peel for supports while effect works. So, like, while Soon is busy dodging all this bullshit, effect has meanwhile gone and killed Unko. AKM's committing a visor to this as well. Oh my god. The 900 IQ t rip tire. Does it so you can't hear it? Trace appeals. Like, he baits. What a fucking genius. Holy shit. I'm assuming this looks intended. This looks absolutely intended. This looks like, okay, Trace is peeled off. I have ripped her. I'm going to fire it. Tracer knows where I am. She's going to come for me, so I'm just going to hold it here. I see Tracer coming. I'm just going to explode her. And I don't take damage from my own bomb, so I'm okay. Holy shit. Holy shit. The outplay. PMA wins fights. Yeah, well, he, he stayed in there. Gets him going. Diva Bomb's good. Might cause a C9. Oh, barely. Coco. Very isolated, going to die, and now this it cleaned up. Such a pity, because that looks so close. It looks so near. And again, Rogue playing normal Rogue style. Second Rogue, give Rogue an inch, they'll take a mile. All the way to the spawn. Time is swapping to the Widow. 
Only Taimu, man. Only Taimu would do this. This is bold. This is basically saying I am going to blow your Tracer's head off and blow IKM's head off. If you can force a support, if Soon can do enough damage to force a support ultimate, like Taimu just gets pressed. Like Taimu is playing Widow into a dive, basically. It's a very cute pulse bomb. Almost works, but he dies a bit too early. Full commitment from Rogue. Don't blame them. They're ahead in this fight, so they might as well just keep it rolling, keep it going as stably and safely as possible. Time is swapping to Diva for the stall. Why is Mickey on Zarya? When did this happen? So he swapped to Zarya when Taimu went with a. It's an interesting decision. Not one that pays off at all. Taimu's just up here, sniping down as well. It's completely obvious. Nox just engages. Doesn't even need help. AKM's just going to gun Taimu down as well. This feels like a risk. This feels like, hey guys, I totally got this. Let's let's pick these heroes. Maybe we can do it with these. Let's change this up and see what happens. It just seems a bit bizarre to me. That feels like those decisions to me felt more like Envy saying we are good enough to make this work and make this happen, therefore we will pick these heroes and win, rather than just picking the best heroes for the situation. If I that that would be my analysis of that situation. Chips doing a beauty job stalling. There we go. And there we go. One minute, one second left on the clock. I think that's actually important because if, um, like, if I understand this game mode correctly, um, basically what would happen is if Envy completed in overtime, um, then they, and Rogue, say, had 57 seconds, then Rogue would gain an initial three seconds, which will put Envy on three seconds, which means that they get the full minute, which means that Rogue will get the full, um, will get extra time as well. So that one, that one second actually, I believe, makes a pretty heavy difference. Envision versus Face. That was I managed to catch the end of that. That was pretty good. I can recommend Envy versus Face. Pretty hype watching it. Okay, let's see. Defensive lineup. Triple DPS with mono support again. Uncle on the mono support. Maybe this has just been echoing through the pro scene. You know, maybe people have been doing this in scrims and just winning with it, but we'll see how it works. We'll see if the same exact same thing happens to Anko, which is, I imagine, what's going to happen. With new D.Va, there's no way you'll be able to run this strat. With new D.Va, you just send D.Va and Winston to dive Anko, and Anko's just going to explode. There's, there's no saving yourself. If gets it in overtime, play only Rogue will get a push. Yeah, currently only Rogue will get a push. If there's 57 seconds, then I think Envy would get a push. That, that's why I wanted to emphasize that this one minute, one second is ridiculously important. Because if it was 57 seconds, for example, which means that Envy needed to still, um, needed to stall for one second longer to give themselves a good chance here. Or to give themselves a better chance, basically. Taimu gets first blood. Doesn't surprise me at all. It feels like exactly the same thing has happened. Oh. It feels like exactly the same thing happened. Like, all that's happened right now is Coco has jumped into the back line, is zoning out the Ana. Doesn't have to do anything to stop Unko. And then Taimu is just going to find a position where he can do as much damage as possible. And then Envy are just going to 
five versus four or whatever. Like three people are trying to peel for the Anna at the moment, it feels like. And so Taimu just takes his time, finds an opening, gets some kills. Like there's, there's nothing that Anna can do about it. Mickey below block AKM? Yep, that's just good positioning by... That's actually really nice by Mickey as well. Just pincering there, so Taimu goes in one way, Mickey flies in the other and just holds the door, basically. This is a good motion by Taimu, just to try and get the high ground. No, he's just going to stick on the low ground, interesting. I, w I do want to mention, guys, like, th that's a cool rocket jump. You see these things? These are called stairs. They, they exist too. That's a cute as hell rocket jump, but there's literally a staircase and you, you'd come out right here as well. Um, you're not coming out through a doorway, which, sure, the only thing that's scary here is Unko at long range. Eh, 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 eh. It's cute, but... This is nice by effect. It's what we in Team UK called a maggot. Maggoting. Effect just stays in the back line. Easy as possible in his life. Gets a kill. This is this fight done. This is this fight completely done. This is where I think Rogue missed a trick. And I think Rogue... Rogue were the first adopters of this super aggro, super, like... Push to spawn dive style, right? You you take an advantage, you win a team fight, and you just push and push and push and push and push and go to spawn. What Envy are doing here isn't necessarily that. It's more like push and then get yourselves in positions where you can get a kill when they try and re-engage. And that is proving to be infinitely stronger. Um, and has steadily become sort of more the norm. The diving Taimu. Actually, are they... What the fuck is killing the shit out of time? Is it literally just a f uh, literally just soon? No, soon and Nox both go for him. He just retreats back to the point. Does get Taimu. And they did have to throw an ult transcendence just to keep him up. But during all this time, Nico got picked off. Like, what exactly happened to Nico? Where where was Nico during all this? He just bounces out, gets discorded. Bounces across the road. Okay. Gets caught by effect, takes an absolute shit ton of damage, and then gets killed by Taimu. Easy. Just effect. Effect is outplaying the shit out of Rogue at the moment, getting so much work done. But it's also worth mentioning that it wasn't just Effect. Effect got him low, and then you saw instantly that Taimu was shooting him, that, Ch that Mickey was moving forward to go and kill and finish that target off. Like, Envy's target calling was better and snappier than Rogue's has looked. And so it doesn't surprise me that Ro um, Envy are looking better at the moment. Effect looking for an angle, has Pulse Bomb. Rogue, this is Rogue trying to fish for um, some kind of advantage. So they know that they managed to force Transcendence. So they know that Transcendence is out at the moment. In terms of support ultimates, they can suspect, and they're probably reasonably certain that Harry Hook has Sound Barrier. Okay, fair enough. They can get that Sound Barrier out with a few ways. Um, they can send in Nico just to try and Dragon Blade, and that will draw it out instantaneously. Nice, the really nice thing at the moment for Rogue is hopefully they realize this, is that if they dive Harry Hook super aggressively with a Dragon Blade, Harry Hook will not even touch the floor. He will not touch the floor and not get that ultimate out, therefore he's not going to actually get anything done. Is there something really distracting? It's Twitter. Twitter is really distracting me because someone had a video posted with a girl doing this with two calls. About F... 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 N... G... Oh, fuck it. Fanatic... Renegades, whatever. Ari. Good enough for the, uh, the corn dog team. So they can try and dive Harry Hook with this. Instead. <sighs> okay, well, what? I hate this Steve bomb. It gets a ton of kills and gets a shitload done, but I hate it. 
I don't think they expected it to land around the corner, and that's why I get so many kills. But the thing with Diva Bomb is this. Diva Bomb is, in pro-level games, Diva Bomb is like your, your take a breather button. Like, it's, it, you smash it when, like, you want the fight to just stop. And you, you want the fight to just, like, pause. That's really powerful if someone uses something time-sensitive. For example, if someone uses Dragon Blade and you drop a Diva Bomb and your team just stands around the Diva Bomb going, eh, Genji, you can't do shit, Genji's not going to do anything. Like, he can't, he can't do shit at that point. He's just got to sit there with his Dragon Blade in his hand going, uh, okay, fuck. Um, so, like, it's really good for stuff like that. It's really good if the enemy team has an advantage in terms of economy, in terms of ultimate economy or is even even with you, uh, and they try and use that advantage or try and use these ultimates that are time sensitive, do something and push in, and you just drop a diva bomb and then they go, oh, shit, we can't actually push here. Um, really good at that. AKM's bomb. So what I see Rogue doing at the moment, this push I consider to be, this feels like an eco push, right? It's like, we're, we're trying to stabilize. We know that the enemy team has a slight advantage on us in terms of support ultimates. Um, because we don't, we're 30% away from Trance, we're 50% away from Sound Barrier, we haven't seen Sound Barrier from the enemy team in a little while. So what we're going to do is we're going to engage super hard, let's try and jump the Lucio for example, or jump any target that we can get our hands on. So Soldier 76, Lucio, or Zenyatta would all be fine. Try and bait Envious into using the support ultimate. And that will even things up for us when we want a proper fight. And then if we just make this fight drag and slow it down as much as we can, then we're probably going to be okay. So they dive in, get super deep. That doesn't catch... Interesting that that possible wasn't caught. And then they peel back, realizing that NVO are sort of aware of this. They just peel back. AKM sends this bomb in. I think they weren't expecting it just to go around this corner. That or maybe Nox knocked everyone into it. Could also be very likely that Nox didn't assist here. Nico draws the Dragon Blade, snipes off Mickey, but Mickey's bomb gets AKM and Nico, which is insanity. Um, and I don't like that Dragon Blade at all for that. Because now Envious, like, the nice thing for Rogue is that it sort of did work, in that the Unco, in that the supports managed to build up ultimate charge. So yeah, just caught two people. Effect, if Effect builds a boss bomb before a big fight starts and manages to get the boss bomb on support and bait out an ultimate, that'll be huge. Time even going for a cute flank. Sound Barrier goes out on the front line for Envy, doesn't hit Time, who does hit Effect, forces the... Uh, no, Unko Trance, okay, that makes more sense. So Unko... Unko just trances. AKM drops low, Unko trances to save AKM. So, good pressure, like, somehow Effect has alone managed to pressure AKM enough to get that done through fucking Defense Matrix and two supports. Sound Barrier gets used a moment later because that gives you an advantage, of course, whoever uses a support ultimate first has a disadvantage. So then Sound Barrier is still burning off while the next support ultimate should be coming in, but this is good This is good target priority by Rogue, just going, oh, Time is on his own back here, he has nothing to help him, we're going to just turn around and kill him. Um, very, very nicely done by Rogue, good prioritization. That's why I don't like flanks like that, because that often is the result. Sometimes it kills everyone, but quite often the enemy team just turns around and kills you. Which is what ends up happening, and Effect has already kind of shot his load. Winston has an ult. And Time Mu is back and just poking. Okay. Winston has an ultimate is absolutely enormous. Chips is going to be a problem. Soon is a bit away from my pulse bomb as well. Um, so I won't be able to just try and bomb chips and then get, that, get it that way. The advantage is that it's Again, I'd say this bomb is a touch early. Like, this bomb forces... This bomb does force the super hard engage. The problem with this bomb is the way that he launches it goes here. And so, Envy don't... Envy's decisions are... We can either engage and just start the fight with a transcendence to make sure that everyone gets through uh, and survives the push-in. Or we just... Like, Winston tries to bubble it and we just back off and wait. And in that decision tree, and we decide to push in, which in my mind is probably the correct decision. And they just run in and start the fight early. It does mean that Wins is going to get a better sound barrier off than Gypsy's um, ultimate here. 
Yeah, that that is not going to do anything. AKM going to just have to wait this out. Like, this is the nice thing about this forced flight is that AKM will be able to just visor when he needs to. He's just biding his time. Like, they're not even forcing it. They can see that they're already winning this fight. Envy are pulling back. Don't even need to use it. They use a the sound barrier to do it, but that's fair enough. Chips use his ultimate, so it's pretty good. Diva's suicide pacting. Board ultimate on my side. This is cute from soon. Soon trying to set up for a kill on the back line. So this kind of play is standard out of tracers, where if you get managed to get this flank path clear with tracer, then you can go into the back. You can throw a pulse bomb in. You can force out support ultimates, and then you are in a really strong place for the next fight. Like you are basically going to prevent the next fight, considering how much time they need to defend. Like they need to get stuff like that on the go. Again, Mickey going on the Zarya. Like, they're completely swapping over to more of a Death Ball comp. The one thing I would be scared of in doing this is that Rogue would be very practiced against playing against um, sort of Death Ball comps as Dive, like they did it for ages. And if you have players that are used to playing against the Death Ball comp with a dive comp, they're gonna do well. Like, they are really gonna do well. They know how to exploit this. Coco's gonna have a fucking miserable time, I predict. Um, and, yeah. Like, Rogue are just not gonna give them an inch at this point. You can see that Rogue are just gonna push and push and push and push and push, and because Envy can't engage super quickly or super fast, they're just gonna find the weak link, Taimu, for example, and then try and just kill it. Effect goes for a pulse bomb, but it's predictable as fuck. Gets caught, disarmed, no problem. Coco advancing forward, but AKM can just peel back. Doesn't even have to really worry about this sort of stuff because he's got people in the back line probably feeding him information. Can just go onto the flank, go in with the rest of the dive. Reinhardt is completely fucking surrounded and useless at this point. Like he's block he is blocking the visor and getting something done there. But this is if Envy win this, this is purely in the back of Envy being such a fucking strong team. And they're just surrounded and killed. And I think, like, at the moment, Rogue are just going to take it slow on the point and just stand on the point, protect each other, and their reinforcements are going to come back faster, so they're just going to win this fight. So this fight is done. So really nicely done by Rogue. Very cleverly done. Well, not very cleverly, but just played their style to full effect against... Time is now on Roadhog, so they're going triple tank against Dive. They do have a grav. A lot is riding on the shoulders of this grav. Because, um, like, crucially, Unco does not have trance. They can suspect that there might be a trance being used. This is a good bomb. Oh, no! No! Oh, Mickey. Mickey, no. Oh my god. It, it just. Oh my god. Um, where, where is it? Where is the fucking Sam? The tragedy that is unfolding before our very eyes. Okay. The tragedy that is unfolding before our very eyes is three, is well, two very important things that are going to go very, very wrong very, very soon. Chips has boosted Harry Hook, so we have a Boostio. It's not really optimal, uh, <laughs> to say the least. Boostio, he could kind of do some damage, but it, it's not as good as other options. Let's put it that way. Mickey. Well, this is fine. Chips has been bombed, but Mickey, Mickey has projected barrier. It's all fine. It's, it's A-OK. -okay. Nothing could possibly go wrong here. Fuck Lucio. <laughs> Fuck this Lucio. Fuck this Lucio in the ass. He's taken the nano boost. He's taken the projected barrier. He's taken everything from the entire fucking team that could have saved them. Just... It, it is just the saddest fucking thing you'll ever see. Oh my god. <laughs> that, that's it, that's done. Like, at this point, Mickey should just put his hands up and just fucking walk away. Because... And Harry Hooks, you just go, guys, guys, what do you... I can't carry you guys. You're giving me everything, but I still can't carry you. You're that terrible. Oh my god. <laughs> I am convinced that Lucio has something with his model that just makes him steal all this shit. 
Now both hot takes. Get a little bit more health on that, right? Nox has to play this extremely carefully, by the way, because if he fucks up for a split second, he's going to explode. Because um, Taimu is just going to annihilate him. Can we... I need to... I need, like, a soundboard ready. Okay, let's... Uh, speed... Boop. Ah, uh, feels bad, man. These, these are some very interesting swaps. Coco, everything is now on your back. Like, this Urshada has to be friggin' perfect. It's not perfect, unfortunately. It, it's okay. In a lot of instances, it will be a pretty good one, but it wasn't perfect. It's still just enough. Good enough is apparently good enough. Uh, holy shit, did Envy make heavy weather of that one. Like, Nanaboost went completely wrong. Graviton got eaten. Literally all on Coco's shoulders. He got the Lucio as well. Like, that's... Like, this is where being able to see CC is going to be very important. Um, Harry is also going to be able to get his sound barrier off. Wins is not going to be able to get anything. So I think it did get wins. So wins has gone this way, AKM has gone this way, Mickey's sort of stuck. So there's a lot of very low hit point targets. I think um, wins is in a position where he can just get killed as well. Yeah, so effect just kills wins and then they can go and hunt down AKM. With the sound barrier up, Coco can just run around and hit things. Soon's in a lot of trouble here. Has to run away. Nox. Interesting positioning out of him, just dodges the bomb. But effect is tying up two important people at the moment, keeping them low. Payload is moving forward, but this this is disastrous for Rogue, really, because Rogue can only draw this map now. If they finish it. If they finish it. Oh, that's a bad hook to miss as well. This is going to be a... That's a juicy sound barrier as well. Oh, Hulk's going to go right into the Diva Matrix. Diva does not give a fuck. We'll get bounced off. It will push him back, so that it's going to make it hard to contest, but they do manage to do it. Does de get the DMX, though. Coco going to do some work. Good boot from Harry, but doesn't quite get enough. Effect trying to do what he can. Just one more stalling target on the point. Contested, contested, contested. Whiffed her, Shadow. Does manage to kill the Tracer regardless, and then there we go. And so now rogues just need to get one third on the first point. Like this, this is this one second coming into play. That one second is huge. You mean envy? Maybe. Don't you mean envy can only draw now? Yes, I mean envy can only draw now. Sorry. Okay, forward, 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 forward. Are they doing mono support? They're doing mono support with Roadhog. Interesting. Who knows, maybe one of the support has been the Zeitgeist. Um, I seem skeptical. Is a pro watching who can DM me on uh, Discord? Not that hard to find. I mean, most. I mean, pretty much every of the big channels at least. Um, the reasoning, let me know. It just seems very vulnerable to a single Winston getting into position. Nox take a lot of damage there, and if the Roadhog peels for it, Winston's going to die. The grenade is juicy as well, but they can just hide. Taimu gets soon, which is huge, so they're going to have to regroup. They have one more push to do stuff in. Now, the scary thing here is that the Roadhog is going to cause problems for Nox as well, but Taimu finding... Like, Taimu has found effect twice now, once on the Junkrat, once on the Roadhog. Okay. They're going to have to touch it now. Can, can you please not see night? There we go, thank you. Winston isolating on the point. Taimu just nails soon again. Taimu, what a god. Harry Hook, nano visor, done. Match is done. I just felt sloppy. I prefer, like, I prefer the mono support with 
Roadhog instead of the um, Junkrat. Because Roadhog, like, all of these... Like, every single one of these has self-heal. Or some form of self-peel. So even though Anna won't be able to do any much healing, because every single time they push, Nox is just going to jump them. Uh, Nox is just going to jump chips, and that's it. But Soldier has a self-heal. Winston has a bubble and can jump away. Mickey, uh, well, D.Va, can fly away, Defense Matrix Effect, can blink and recall. Taimu can half a paint can. Like, all of these guys can survive without a support. So if they ran this from the start, this makes more sense. But if you're running something else, uh, Little time on first point on point first point slightly numbering Kings Row. Interesting. Like I said, I haven't been paying a huge volume of attention to Envy because they've just been winning nonstop. And it's like the games they've been having haven't been close yet. Only now are they becoming close. Surprised Harry didn't get play the game. It's more chips that enables them. The The problem that I see there is that, like, no matter how good chips is, if there's a Winston just jumping in his face, he's not going to do anything. Unless, like, all five of the, like, unless everyone just stands on top of chips and peels for him, he's not going to do anything. And the issue with Numbani, like, the difference between first point, the first time they did this defense and the second time they did, it, the, uh, they did this defense is the volume of shit peeling for chips. Um, so here they had D.Va and Soldier with chips. And they basically had three people on this back line constantly. Well, the first time they did it, they only had two people. They had Chips and um, Harry on the Soldier, I believe. Uh, if we go back, go back, go back, go back. Like, this trap was fucking beautiful. So they get the first pick, and then if we go back, like, it's just two people. That and, like, Time who just destroyed everyone. Uh, oh wait, did, did they do the tiebreaker? Oh no, both teams get like a map point. Because it's judged on difference, I believe. Okay, analysis, 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 analysis. There we go. It's nice to see Mitch on the desk. Would like to see him still cast, um, rather than be on the desk, because he's just better at casting, but... He was nice to have there. Okay, standard and standard could be, time on the Sombra. Nothing unusual. On the offense, if they stick with this, um... Interesting to see the Junkrat instead of the Reaper, but you can definitely see it working. Mickey also peels a lot for- yeah, Mickey- like, Mickey sh normally should be peeling a lot for chips, regardless. Like, the D.Va's job is to peel generally for the flex support. It's a night- it's like most of what D.Va will be doing for like the first part of a fight, and then after that the D.Va can do other things, but it's easy to try and catch as much damage as possible that will be going onto the flex support normally, and trying to do something with that- uh, do something about that. Nico going onto the Genji, actually. Goes, time move goes uh, the very early attempt. Recalls out. I'm going to play from the top left high ground. This is a little less vulnerable to just being rushed down. Um, but it's a little bit harder to get health packs. Like the, the sort of the trade off. You have two positions you can occupy. So if you think about it, the trade off from like if you're up here or you're in here, for example, it's very easy to get this health pack. Like very, very easy to pick the health pack up. Uh, when you're up here, the health packs are a little bit farther away, so you have to generally commit to coming down or going like around the back or going inside the building there to actually get healed. And it's easier just to scoop up a couple of picks, so to be a little bit careful with that. Again, just scooping up a ton of damage onto Unko. Almost get chips down with the dive as well, so it's soon, I think, finding a target there. You're going to be a little bit careful. I think that's... I think that is soon. who's almost found chips. Yeah, now they're peeling like crazy. The fact that they didn't get first, the fact that they didn't, didn't get a kill here is actually really huge, though, because now time is going to be building up a shit ton of ultimate. Like, the, if Mickey doesn't get demacked here, this is like 100% an EMP. Yeah, time is now EMP ready. Mickey didn't even need 
to pick this up. Mickey getting DMAC there is big mistake. Soon is just going to wait now. Mickey's going to be stuck without a mech, and so the next push is going to begin without a diva mech. Now, nicely, they do have EMP, but it's still going to be tricky. Like, not having the diva mech means that they're going to have to be very careful. Like, Chips has to be very defensive with his positioning because there's nothing going to that will stop stuff just diving in and killing him. They still decide to counter engage, and that pays off. Which I like. Because if they let. Um, if they let Rogue get anywhere near the target they want to kill, then that's gonna, like, it's instantly just gonna die. That's old Diva's job, but do you think New Diva will be able to do that? Yeah, to some degree. Not to the same potential, but she can definitely sort of cause problems for Tracer still. I don't, like, it depends on if New Diva gets played. The issue I see is that Zarya can kind of do the same thing. <coughs> but also offer alternatives. Like, Zarya gives you two seconds of protection, Diva gives you two seconds of protection. Take your pick. A lot of good damage coming out. This is just... Like, the Transcendence felt very early. It's a factor of the dive, I guess, yep. <coughs> dive goes on chips, chips transits to survive it, and then Envy just take the time and kill everyone. And Rogue is just trying to die as fast as possible to not um, feed any ultimate. Like, Rogue did a good job there to get out as cleanly as they did. Like, Taimu doesn't quite have his ultimate up yet. He almost has one, but not quite. <clears throat> He's probably going to have it, regardless. Like, he'll probably be able to do enough damage on the entrance that he'll be able to EMP, so... It's still good discipline from Rogue. Like, it's good to see that Rogue have, have the self-control to actually manage to make this sort of stuff happen, though, because it can make a difference on how much you give away. This is really good. If they can get enough pressure, like, soon keeps the pressure on. The Transcendence is up as well, so, like, the fact that Transcendence is up and we EMP during the Transcendence <clears throat> isn't great. I think Taimu got a little bit nervous, maybe. But all Soon needs to do is make it to where Anko is, and then he's going to just be fine. In fact, however, Anko tested on high ground. Could have got a lot done there, but Nox did a good job on him. I'm guessing Nico's also up there, maybe, or Nico helped with that. What's happening to Effect at the moment? He activates Visor, he's got 100 hit points, and he just gets wrecked by Nox, and then Nox ults and just sits on him. Well done, Nox. Very well played by Nox. Now this is actually close. No Nox is he's cleaning up, apparently. Eventually, Envy do manage to pull it back, though. Just not enough damage out from Rogue. And that's really bad. Because now Taimu has another EMP. The longer this takes, the worse it is. And, like, giving Taimu a big Winston to shoot at... Never gonna work well. He needed to just dunk himself. When he was over by the river, he needed to just throw himself in it. 30 seconds left on the clock, not many resources left. Wins has to get, like, Wins has to not get EMP'd and then Sound Barrier after the EMP comes in. He decides to go early. Taimu is out of position, so Taimu doesn't actually get a good EMP. Harry Hook gets first blood. It's... Rogue is, oh, super low. Mickey's super low as well. Mickey gets demeched by Soon. Soon now probably has clear sight on a couple of targets, and the dive is going to be pretty strong, but in fact, Effect is still on an, a very strong health pack and just tunneling up. The problem is that if they're tunneling up against a bunch of tanks still on the point, Rogue's reinforcement is going to go, come in very, very quick. So Rogue can just sort of afford to wait and reinforce, and then they'll just clean this up. Dragonblade to confirm. Sound Barrier gets committed as well. That was a bold Sound Barrier. I think at this point, like, I actually, like, there's a decision tree, right? That the enemy Genji has just dragon bladed. What do you do? You have choice A and choice B. Let's let's weigh out the pros and cons. Let's do a pro and con analysis. So choice A is uh, sound barrier. Choice B is like just die. Okay, sound barrier gives you like, if you do not sound barrier, you have about a ninety percent chance to lose the fight. Right? You have. Uh, sorry, yeah, 90% chance to lose the fight. 
So let, let's actually make this into a positive interview. You have like a 10% chance to lose the fight. Uh, to win the fight, rather. Um, because there's just not enough here to be able to deal with all the stuff coming from Rogue. Rogue's reinforcements are going to be coming in nice and quickly, while Taimu has very like Taimu has very quick rollout. Um, Coco has pretty quick rollout, but he's here with us, I think. Um, Mickey can get there quickly. Effect can get there quickly, but Effect is here with us as well. So this Dragon Blade, if you don't sound barrier, he's going to kill Soldier. He's going to kill you. He's going to kill everyone. Um, if you sound barrier, then you buy enough time maybe for something to happen, a swing to happen. The difference is that I think Rogue is just like. Sound Barrier is going to just make this into about a 40% chance to win. The thing is, if they do win this fight, then they do manage to hold on here. And even on next point, they will have um, EMP ready. So I'm okay with them using it, I think. Just for that, that small chance that... Like, I think 40% is being generous, to be honest. Um, but for that small chance that something does, something miraculous does happen... Well, we'll see. Like, part of this is like, okay, was that worth it? Was it worth throwing that EMP, uh, that sound barrier in there to see if something happens? They run in, they get EMP, but beautiful is your Bianco to sort of anticipate that. This is going to make it very difficult. We have the, the double trance. The diva bomb goes up. The diva bomb comes back down. Doesn't get anything. Does clear the point for a second or two. Stall out the fight. Then goes to trances. No, it's just a straight team fight. Effect goes down early, but Coco gets Zen. Losing Zen and Yada is usually very huge, but... The scary thing right now for Envy is that Chips has to play super careful, uh, just because Rogue are playing like the super aggressive dive style, so they can get in very early, uh, very quickly, and very easily. Uh, losing effect is going to just remove a shitload of pressure and a shitload of damage. The nice thing for Envy is that this fight has gone on long enough that they will reinforce and win probably at this point. Sandbarrier gets committed. Why? Actually, I'd like that Sandbarrier quite a lot because there's not going to be amazing opportunities. It effect swaps to the Doomfist. We see a lot of Doomfist get picked up on this part of the map. There's just a lot of walls to sort of get quick picks on. And that, and he has like a really quick rollout as well, so he's going to get there very quickly. And that in time, he's playing the tracer. Going to reinforce nice and fast. And we're curious to see if effect changes or if he stays. Would not surprise me at all if he just, if he just stays. Okay, I'm instantly swapping to the Reaper. Nico looks like he's going to swap to Diva. Okay. And then Sombra comes back. That change back is actually a, okay. Unko, oh, that's actually very interesting. Unko swaps the Sombra of his own, so he can try and deny packs, try and build up an EMP first, and then try and like just out. If you EMP Taimu and Doomfist, like if you think about the shit that is very very vulnerable to EMP on this team, Taimu definitely doesn't want to be EMP'd. Effect really doesn't want to be EMP'd. Coco really doesn't want to be EMP'd. Chips really doesn't want to be EMP'd. Harry Hook can't use his ultimate. Mickey gonna have a hard time. Like EMP does a lot to this team, and you can just use Talon Comp as well. So you just EMP on the point, Death Blossom, try and win the fight off that. The issue with Voskar is that people don't usually stand clumped on the point, like they would more on Temple of Anubis, so it's a little bit harder to get that super high value Death Blossom. This could be a really good bump for soon, like this angle as Tracer is really powerful, but Chips spots it coming in, gets the kill, fucking beautiful from Chips. It's going to make this push very, very difficult. The big thing right now is that just to get as much out charge as you can on Unco Effect, going to look for the punch maybe. Gets it, doesn't get the wall hit, so just did 100 damage. They've got to chase this. This is very risky though, because Reaper, like with a, if you try and chase Reaper with a Winston, the, only, the problem that you can face is that the Winston keeps the Reaper alive longer than he should, because Reaper will heal a little bit off him. Effect needs to continually just get a pick. Conti like, has to constantly kill someone on entry. If it gets EMP'd, he's just going to explode. Oh, oh, there we go. Offensive EMP used extremely early doesn't seem to... That was, that was a bit of an icky EMP, I'm not going to lie, and this is going to be easy for MV. What triggers this? They just go for it. Doesn't get chips. That might have got effect. I think. Yeah, I think effect is the effect. And Harry Hook were the only two people hit. Chips wasn't hit, so he just trances. No issue. No problem. 
And that's that. And Taimu gets a very easy EMP. That, you can just use that EMP, it doesn't really matter too much. Nico's going to get DMX, probably left. There we go. So Nico's going to have to either suicide and get his mech back, or he's going to try and build it slowly. He's going to suicide, buys, him, buys their team more time. That means that there is one fight left in this. Envy are in a very good position. Very good position. The worst thing that could happen right now is if Trace, if uh, Harry Hook gets picked by Tracer. I think Harry Hook is... Uh, okay, he's not positioning so much easy. He's just standing on the side. If Harry Hook goes down early, then Rogue have an opening. But Sound Barrier is going to do work here. Like, they don't have enough time to really... They might just be able to squeeze out an EMP. Never say never with Sombra Alt. Dive on Chips is fucking beautiful from Nox. Holy shit! So this is beautiful movement out of Soon and Nox. Like, Harry Hook just goes, whoa! Uh, Tracer comes in this way. Nox comes in this way. And so Chips backs up right into the Tracer. Like, this this is how you want your Tracer and Winston to be, where the Winston's coming from one angle, and you're basically backing the enemy target up into Tracer. So Chips just walks straight into the Tracer, dies. That's really, really nice as a pickup. Mickey, meanwhile, is also getting d apparently. I think he's just eating a shitload of Reaper shots, judging by how low he is. Um, this isn't really going to hit anything. Okay, I'm just going to wait for him. Death Blossom gets caught by Mickey. Mickey gets a double kill as well, which is fucking super high value. Effect is going to have a good time in this brawl, and if he can't kill, if Reaper survives, if AKM. Okay, there we go. Effect is going to have a good time in this brawl. Like, the only thing that could really fuck Effect up at that point is if he misses a punch and he ends up near Reaper and Reaper just shoots him. Um, but after that, it's just so easy for him to just slam people around. Okay, 45%. Well, Skyer Industries, who knows? Not running a somber defense. Interesting. I think it's just perfect mirrors on both sides. Going to be doing standard high ground defense. Well, like, I'd call this like an old fashioned high ground defense almost. This is, yeah, this would be old-fashioned, because people know how to approach this now. Sort of the problem with running this position is that it, so what you can do is if the enemy team, so the idea is the enemy team goes up the stairs here and comes around back here, and then sort of equalizes the high ground advantage. What you can do, though, is if you see them running this way, your team just runs around, like, this pathway, and then just gets to the other side and defends from there, and it's like, no big deal. So let's see. Let us see. Looks very, very bright. Whereas if they lose, they are going to rely on the Detroit Renegade to defeat FNR GSE tomorrow. So really, this is a huge, huge hold here for Rogue, and they have had some. So like you can see, they are look like this spam. You can see they're coming out and they're just shooting everywhere. This is looking for a Sombra. This is waiting for Sombra to appear and try and kill Chips. And they're just spamming every approach. And it's like, where, where's the Sombra? Where's, where's the Sombra? Guys, where's the Sombra? Where's the Sombra? Where's the Sombra? Don't shoot at them, they, they have a Sombra. They have a Sombra. Oh, wait. 15 seconds have passed, they, they don't have a Sombra. So they go and take this high ground? Nox's gonna just try and cut them off. This this is, I think this is just confusing Envy because they're like, wait, they they don't have a a sombra, okay, like they've been playing and acting like they're playing into a sombra, um, and then it's suddenly like, hang on, whoa 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 whoa, they they don't have a sombra, guys, we can we can actually shoot at the enemy team. 
So you can see, they posture, they're going this way, instant reaction from Rogue, peel around this way. Occupy the opposite high ground. And so it's like a game of cat and mouse, right? Because you can't stand on the point with four members of the enemy team just staring down at you. They go in super aggro, and you can see that instantly peel around to the other side. <laughs> instantly peel around back to the other side. Cat and mouse. Nox is in a lot of trouble here, though, and this is sort of where it goes wrong. Um, this is where, like, the, the Sombra comes into play, because the issue is that the only support for Nox is Anko, unless Winds drops down there, which is like a death sentence for Winds. So Zenyatta is not going to be able to support this Winston. If you had a Sombra health pack here, he could bounce to it and pick this up, or he'll bounce back further back and pick up the last health pack here, and that's something like a 300 instantaneous hit points for him, which is way stronger. But th there's just no no defense for this Winston, so he's just going to go down. And like, there wasn't enough peel for Nox, that's a big loss. And now Effect, is, who's been out playing soon consistently, is just going to continue to do so. He does, he's, he's literally just stood still shooting people. And that's that. I Zoom looked really bad, or is it me? So, like, it's unfair to say that. I suppose Asun is a very good tracer. Do, do not take from the series that Asun is somehow a bad tracer. It's just that Effect is better, and Effect is really good. One of the best in the world. So, okay, so this push. The issue with this push, and it's fucking hilarious when it happens, is sometimes Divas will position, like, you see that Divas over here, um, if this gets scouted, what D.Va can do is just rocket into it and she can knock everyone, like, into the pit here. It's goddamn hilarious when it happens. Seems that Rogue needed Anna instead of Zen. Yeah, Anna might have worked better. But they want the Zen for, like, because... Uh, and AKM's now swapped to uh, the Sombra. Uh, yeah, Anna would kind of work better for that playstyle. Maybe. I don't know if they've tried it or not. I don't know if there's a specific disadvantage to running the Ana there. Aside from just the normal Ana disadvantages, not having Discord or Time Moves having the time of his life, just shooting, shooting stuff. And anytime you like, guys. There you go. Ending up with triple support with AKM on the Sombra, desperately trying to just clutch in. Envious didn't even need to use ultimates to take the first point, so have a snowball of one to go into the second. Not looking good. It's weird because like, Rogue's tactics don't look too bad, it's just... I would like to see them do that playstyle with the Ana, or try and make it work with the Sombra. The issue with the Sombra is that it's like... When you end up on that left side, you don't have access to the health pack, so it's very easy to end up without any healing, but you're just going to rely on the Winston and the Diva picking up the health packs. Mr. X and Golden Boy. Looking lovely, as ever. What's your point Let's go. Rogue on first attack, Envy on first defense, Taimu picking up the, the rat again. I wish they'd have the camera on Taimu, because Taimu puts down clever traps. I want to see where this trap goes. Do you think that Rogue is having so much trouble this season because of how inflexible they are in strats? Partially, they also took a long vacation after the World Cup. They took a big vacation, then they moved to the US, and then when they started actually full-time practicing again, they, looked, they came alive again in a way that um, E and I did kind of didn't. And so... Yeah. Can we see where the trap is? Over there. It doesn't have a conk mine down, it's just a foot trap. Rocket goes in. Free 10% ch charge for Harry. Feels good, man. Very cagey defense from Envy. Just respecting AKM. AKM has phenomenal hit scan. Let's see. Soon swapping off to the Widow. So going off the Tracer. So, like, this is interesting. I find this very interesting. 
Or did soon, yeah, soon swap him off the tracer. So he's realized, I think, that Envy are playing very defensively with a Junkrat. So it's going to be very hard to get a good angle. Like, if everyone is just on this. Like, this is one of the the painful parts about playing tracer on Gibraltar, is that, like, there's always a second floor, right? And it's all, like, up here, the high ground point around the sort of hang, the hangar door area. Um, it's very, very difficult to get to with tracer. Like, you have to either go across the blue boxes and like hop in directly, which is like a straight line for the enemy team to see you coming, or you have to come in through the flank route here, which is going to be very difficult with a Junkrat. So swapping to the Widow here I like, because the only range threat is going to be Harry Hook. Coco has to dive you, Taimu can't do shit about you. I'm hoping to see a lot out of this Widow. It's just going to cause problems as well. My Envy have to play so carefully now, and Taimu can't really afford to spam super aggressively. Harry gets called out. They just dive him. Soon nails effect. You can see him lining up the shot. Oh god. I wish they get a camera on in a moment or two longer. Like, okay, this fun fact broadcast for Overwatch contenders on a five minute delay. What would be nice is like if they did a two minute delay in the studio and then had it so that like the observers who are recording it can see like a like five seconds, ten seconds ahead, or just like a kill feed, and just see what's happening. Because like the camera's on soon, and I'm gonna go slow motion here. Like you need precognition to be able to fucking observe or watch correctly. Because you can see the tracer coming, and like when I was what literally when I was reviewing this, I was like, oh, it looks like he's about to get this tracer. Like he spots the tracer, and it's like this is dangerous for the tracer, right? And then he swaps off it, and it would have been so nice to see this kill. Because soon just blows his fucking head off, and that's so cool. I fucking- I- I- I absolutely love Tracer vs. Widow. Absolutely love Tracer vs. Widow as a matchup. Because the Widow can just end it, and it's so satisfying when it happens. Effect swapping to Doomfist. I mean, Envy set up for kind of uh, area denial with the Junkrat. Way to create space is you have two Doomfist Junkrat. Doomfist Junkrat, Soldier 76. There it is. It's just quick. Nice and snappy. Please tell me, Harry. Harry's still staying on. Ooh, very nice. Um. This is very interesting. Hello, Coco. I fancy seeing you here. Oh, Tommy! You can't do that. You can't walk around those corners. Is Harry Hook going to stick for the visor? I don't think they're even going to get in through the doorways here. Bit of a shame. It's good to see that, like, the pros missed that. Oh, no, 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 Oh, no. Oh. Widow, please. Widow, please. Please. This is previous patch, yes. It might do it for the playoffs. I'm not 100% sure. They nanovisor it. The mono support is fucking fascinating. It makes more sense on this map because it's so much harder to get to the um, Ana, and like the Ana has a lot of options and retreat pathways. And it's it's better for just like the entire team to position more or less close to each other, so it's easier to peel if they go for the Ana. Whereas on Numbani, it's just too easy to isolate. I think the Widow can cause some real problems though, because. If like Widow, if Soon and AKM both hit similar targets at the same time, it's just gonna explode them. Honestly though, Soon could maybe even swap here to um, McCree. If Soon can play McCree, it would be fine. In fact, just gonna peel. Oh, well, just gonna go back. Not peel. Gonna 
run off, heal up, regroup. Wouldn't be surprised to see soon change. I would really like McCree. So there's, yeah, there's the, the Lucio. Nano boost on the Winston. Buys, uh, Transcendence already goes off. Beautiful grenade. Oh. Poetry in motion. Right on him. In effect, I had to scoop him up on the floor. Hello, I can. Oh, ho, ho, calculated as hell. Oh, Taimu was a very talented young man. It's always very, very good to watch Taimu play. He gets a lot done. Yeah, Rogue can't do too much here. The scary thing for Envy is that Visor is going to do a lot to make it very difficult for them to mount a defense here because they have been very reliant on people just positioning and coming up strange angles and if you can't do that because Vice is active like they're just gonna have to take a direct fight and I don't think they win direct fights very well here uh, oh! ha! slow motion please uh, I think he shot him through the shuttle like through three people he, he's probably aiming for chips to be honest but man So now, like, the only offensive power is Effect. Dude, it gets on Unco, but the problem that Effect is going to run into is that he has to now get back into the fight somehow without dying. He might just be able to do it just by virtue of sneaking, but soon hears him, sound barrier comes up. Oh! AKM really needed to kill that target, but he's getting pounded around. Envy are just doing a really nice job here. I think this Widow has overstayed her welcome. Um, which is sort of a big part of the problem. Like, I think McCree would have been A-OK. -okay. Running a trash mouse of your own would have been fine as well. <laughs> that should not happen! That should not be happening! Let's see. Time has a. This is actually really, really, really good as a position to be in. Holy shit! Having Riptire on this map, like the enemy team can push in here, 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 and here. Like they're coming through a choke point, and then they're going to go through another choke point down here. Usually, this is going to get some kills. It's going to be extremely hard to stop this. Soon as swapped off Widow. GG. That push is done. Regroup. Golden Boy doing the right thing of calling out that this is this push is well, that push is over. Time is critical at this moment. Effects and time move by in as much time as he can. Trying to catch the respawns almost gets his head blown off as a result. This is good isolation of time. This is sort of the weakness of this kind of positioning. Okay, I'm getting a lot of support as well. DPS goes down. Did Envy just overextend and lose? I think they just did. Mickey's going to go down, and now they're just going to peel them apart one by one. Greedy, 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 greedy. Greedy, 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 uh, gun drops. But notice that soon swapping onto Tracer instantly gets fucking huge results. And there we go. They bought themselves another minute. And by the time the door opens, it's like a minute 15, and then by the time you're around that first corner, it's just like, ugh. Ugh. Not a good feeling. Gets booped away, so the pulse bomb just marks the wall. Taimu going on Widow. Taimu has a brutal Widow. Widow Doomfist. This is going to be really interesting to see. Nano Winston goes in. AKM with a beautiful kill on effect. Like, Effect jumps in, and I imagine AKM just presses Q. Uh, doesn't, doesn't, look, it, like, the tracking is so fucking on point, I thought he pressed Q then. Fucking hell. 
effect is just sailing and it's just the track is perfect. I thought, I literally thought he'd press Q, that was so smooth. <laughs> so silky. Oh my god. Okay. So the visor actually doesn't give them huge value, but does give them enough. Don't leave. Yeah, fuck. I'm so paranoid about this. Okay. They, they are safe in the noise that Wins is going to be on the point, so he can go take high ground. Fucking hell. Fuel bomb going in front of the doorway. I'm going to block it off even more. Okay, I'm going to get a rocket in. Point. Point, please. Please, 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 please. If you did that in rank, you'd be reported for cheating, yeah. Someone would go, oh my god, turn the hacks off, man. And there we go, okay. I thought they were going to see 9 No time remaining, but they, they, they clawed it back and I'd say it's more envious fucking up and just being a bit overconfident and positioning a bit too far forward. Um, Taimu got greedy, poked his nose out a little bit too far, couldn't retreat because when, like, Winston cut him off and body blocked him so he couldn't jump out. Time is going to show soon how it's done, I imagine. 10 out of 10 fucking Venom Mine. It's not going to hit anything, ever, unless Genji or Winston decides to dive him. AKM just gets nailed. Like, some Sombra defense on Gibraltar forces you into such a shitty, awkward position. Because normally you, you like normally you defend from the high ground. If they have a Widowmaker, you fall back a little bit, and you will defend more like cautiously around the back. Widowmaker sort of just forces this pushback because that's what Widowmaker does. If you're playing the Sombra defense, they're going to defend from down here and use the health pack here. Um, but they're just going to be stuck in this hole. Good luck getting out of it. And we pretty much don't care if they win or lose this map. Probably not. No. I imagine it doesn't mean too much, but they still probably want to put the stamp on things. A time, uh, don't get me wrong, Taimu is the kind of person to uh, have a little bit of fun if he knows he can. He has that personality about him. Um, but they are also going to play to win. They are, like, this isn't Bastion Orisa. This isn't fucking um, Bazooka Puppies. Oh, I'm risk going into defense server. Yeah, it's okay. That think a defense matrix caught that. Oh, time move. And you can see the diva just desperately chasing, going, No, Zenyatta, Zen, no. Oh, geez, Zen, oh man. You're gonna get your hair blown off. Ah, oh, jeez. Almost gets the headshot on Nico. Like, honestly, Taimu's gonna exert so much fucking pressure. Like, Taimu's Winnermaker alone is gonna make everyone go, we gotta deal with this, the effect, like... Effects Tracer is god tier, Taimu's Widow is god tier, so it's just gonna be a case of you try and overcommit on one, the other one is just gonna kill everyone. Beautiful shot into soon. Holy shit. This is just stall, 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 stall. And there we go. And everyone leaves the point to go and kill stuff spawning. They get Unko. Watching the doors. Just putting pressure as best they can while well, the payload just calmly rolls forward. Widowmaker absorbing pressure. Meanwhile, Coco and Effect can go and get things done. It must be so nice to play Widow in these situations. Full dive coming out of Rogue to try and counter this somewhat. Play so fast, Jesus. Like this is, this is just scary for Rogue because it's like... They have a dive comp playing against a most like... Five sixths of a dive comp and a Widowmaker, and the Widowmaker is just so difficult to get rid of. And if they don't, she's going to kill everyone. Oh, 
So they engage on the front line instead, and Taimu can just sit back. Coco, in effect, can do all the damage in the world, and Taimu can just start cleaning up. Everyone, everyone taking a dip, taking a dive. Taimu just going to set himself up on the high ground, nice and safe. Feels comfortable, they're going to push all the way to the corner. Harry Hook is going to sit on the payload, send out a couple of tweets. Feels pretty good, man. Okay, oh. Diva Bomb. Diva Bomb is good. That gets effect. Losing half of that pressure, like losing half of those DPS is really, really nasty. Is this 1.0 speed? Yes, this is 1.0 speed. Lose, like... Yeah, so effect is swapped, time is swapped. They want something more flighty on the floor, I think. I think the... I'm not actually sure how I feel about the Doomfist here. Like this, like, this does feel like, let's just see how this works. The issue I see with Doomfist here is that you can't get Doomfist up here very easily. You have to, you'd have to get, like, towards the stairs, and then you can get up here, and then you can fight up here. Um, but you wouldn't be able to just go straight up. And the same is true for the bridge. So it's like if they position on the bridges or on the high ground, Doomfist is going to have a hard time actually engaging on this sort of stuff. Whereas, you know, Genji can, Winston can, um, but Doomfist won't be able to do that. So Doomfist will be kind of awkwardly stuck on the, on the floor. Hello. Hello, Winston. You've, you've come to the wrong neighborhood, son. Let's use your ultimate. Effect. Manages to trace down Nico. Nico didn't Dragon Blade then, okay. You end up dying on that one. Meanwhile, you have Rogue making their way around. Nox catches him out, they're just gonna gun him all down. We've already lost too much. Not enough left there to tank it. Mickey gets demecked as well, which is very, very nice. He's gonna be left alone. They aren't gonna kill him. They're gonna probably kill him now. Or they might just leave him and be very surprised if he doesn't die in this moment. There he goes, first blood. Hunts down Coco. Gets Coco. Feels good, man. There we go. Harry Hook, very brave. Oh, I kind of want. Oh, he gets him. Can't hide, son. Taimu in a really bad position. I get the feeling that we're about to see what the next five minutes is going to look like. Or the next two minutes is going to look like. Which is Envy turn the corner, Rogue dive on them, and then people die. Okay, time we're getting results. Back of the Dragon Blade. Can't hunt down wins, wins gets the boop. Coco is extremely low as well. In danger of getting killed here, actually. He does go down to Nico. Effects is having a hard time. Just gets booped in the air by winds there by the looks of things and then just killed. It's going to be difficult. So like all that's happening is AKM, uh, Nico and Nox are just sitting on this high ground on the opposite side and then if Winston jumps over there they just push the Winston back. Um, like Envy can't match what Rogue are putting up there and so they're just getting these easy dives every single time. Bomb Force is Trance. Very, very nice. Winds is probably going to Sound Barrier relatively soon, I imagine. But Sound Barrier comes out of Harry Hook as well, so they're throwing everything into this fight. Winds just puts the Sound Barrier of his own down to counteract it. That's two support ultimates in this fight for one. Unko will be able to ult if he needs to, but honestly, I'll be surprised if they need it. It'll be very, very nice for Rogue to just hold on to it for, um, for the next fight, for the last fight. The single kill. Or double kill, I guess, is all they needed. No problem. Time who gets a very, very late pick off as well. Very, very late death as well. So that's going to slow this down even more. Next fight, Rogue are probably just going to wait until Envy are fully engaged in the point. Hit uh, hit Transcendence, hit Q on Nico, and then win. Time who engages. No, Nico engages. Kills one. Anko following him around with a 
With Trance, that is the Discord. Pulse Bomb, easy. Night time, we're trying to get something done. Gets booped, ends up on the high ground, confused, dazed, dead. Rogue. Managed to tie it up. Play the game, effect on Doofus? Why is defending Winston on the high ground? Because the enemy Winston was trying to get up. So it's a better perch for when Rogue want to engage, they can jump from there and engage super hard into the back.